let's get to it. Uh, obviously, Mavs Clippers series is set up. Series will start a week from today in L.A., but the conversation that has consumed Mavs Nation over the course of the last week and a half, two, three, however long, is Luka Doncic's candidacy for MVP. And Nick Angstad, our, our Locked On Mavs host, let's start with you. Do you think there's any actual pathway for Luka to win the award? I don't think that Luka has a chance to get into it. I think second is now the conversation for him. Between him and SGA, I think Jokic just is going to have it. His advanced stats have been insane this season. The Nuggets have been very good until they just lost to the Spurs the other night and ruined their chance to get the one seed. But uh, And I think that a lot of voters look at last season and go, man, we really should have voted Jokic instead of Embiid. And then they go, well, let's just give it to him this year. And it's very weird that the MVP has kind of become about that. Sean Bass, how about for you? You think this has uh, gone the way that it should, the way that an MVP discussion should? Yeah, I have no issue with Jokic being the MVP again. I mean, like you said, the numbers are there. He's on a team that tied for first place in the West. I think they have the inside track to maybe win another title, or at least the team from the West that could win another championship. And Lucas Case is great. 39-9-9. and nine. That's never – or excuse me, 33-9-9. Nine and nine. That's never been done before. But it feels like, like what Nick said, the MVP is – always you're handed the MVP the next year after you do something great. I think there was some precedent with that with Dirk. And like, like last year, I really thought Jokic should have been the MVP. They gave it to Embiid, which is fine. Just like this year, if they give it to Jokic over Luka, that's fine too. As long as Luka wins one in the next few years, I think that's what really matters for his legacy. Yeah, the issue here is not Jokic's candidacy. His candidacy is obviously legitimate, but it, it's such a narrative-based award. Bob, you and Sean especially, and Nick for that matter, I mean, you, your, your career is, is narrative-based in some form or fashion, so is ours. Did the Mavs jump on this train too late? Did, was it just their, their surge too late? What, what, why is this not more of a discussion? And what, what seems like from a statistical standpoint a very narrow gap but the odds makers yeah. will tell you it's huge. To me, it's not even an award about who is, in fact, the most valuable player in the NBA. It, it, it is, in fact, uh, you know, a, a a weave of narratives that go on for years at a time. And and I really think this is the year where Luca gets back in the good graces of the voters. And you know, he's not. Uh, James Harden light. He's not a, a stats guy on a bad team. So he's kind of rebuilding his credibility this year, as goofy as that is. You know, a lot of people bet against the Mavs and uh, their desperation with Kyrie and just all these things that everyone just goes with and believes. So he's absolutely having an MVP year. But he also absolutely had no chance to win it with the voters because they had already sort of made up their minds. So I think he has set the table for next time around. But it's like, you know, winning an Oscar for the fifth best film you've ever done. It's just, it, 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 it's kind of goofy in the end. But it also seems to push as much conversation as just about anything about in the NBA these days. He's got a really good chance to win it next year at the very least. If nothing else, he has set the table for 2025 